Hey, hey, this is Eric Arnold, and it's uh, Friday the 3rd of December, and I'm here to bring you the college football picks for the weekend, the big conference championship games here this weekend. Um, I think we got most of them picked. Let's see, I'm just glancing here. Looks like we got nine games. So, missed one or two, got most of them. Uh, we're hoping to go five and four at a minimum. Um, we've been doing well. You know, we're uh, at the moment uh, just topping 55% for the uh, college football season. We think that's pretty damn good. We're hoping that we can uh, have a strong conference championship weekend and push on through the bowl season and finish this season with a good, solid winning record. Uh, before we get to the picks, I, I guess the news in sports is, at least for you know the few of us that give a shit about baseball, is that I've been uh, uh, wrong again. I said that, well, I think that there's more likely than not that they'll come to a deal. I'm not feeling that way anymore. I was just reading an article on uh, the Score app where I guess this uh, moron, Rob Manfred, at the behest of his billionaire uh, puppet master pulling his strings, uh, made a letter coming out just basically painting the players as it's all their fault. And it's like, do you guys even have any concept of what it takes to make a deal? I, it, I mean, you, you're trying to make a deal with a... Uh, uh, on the other side, and you call them idiots, greedy, uh, you know, all that stuff. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think that's going to make them more likely to, you know, want to make a deal? I, I just read or saw a YouTube video. I want to rewatch it because it was very thought provoking. Uh, it was about stupidity. Uh, there's a couple different theories on stupidity. I think one tenant of stupidity that uh, is pretty th common through all the theories on stupidity is there's nothing more dangerous than stupidity. Uh, in other words, you can have an evil man here and he's not nearly as dangerous as a stupid man because the evil man, you can somewhat predict what he's going to do. In other words, he's going to do whatever it takes to advantage him and fuck everybody else. Uh, whereas a stupid man and, and this was the definition, I think it was a Spanish guy who created these, uh, I think he had five rules on stupidity. But his definition of stupidity was somebody whose actions not only disadvantage the people around him or, or the people that he's directly influencing or affecting, not only do his actions disadvantage them, they disadvantage him too. In other words, an evil man, he robs a bank and gets away with it. So now he's got all this money and the people that, uh, whose money he stole, they're all poor. So they're disadvantaged because he stole their money, uh, but he's advantaged himself because he got away with it. Whereas a stupid man, uh, I guess, would uh, steal the money from the bank, throw it in the river so it's all gone, and then, so now, uh, uh, the stupid man not only has, uh, and then gets caught and thrown in jail. So now the stupid man has nothing, and he's in jail. Uh, but the people he robbed, they've lost all their money, too. So he's disadvantaged everybody. Now, that would be the general gist of who a stupid person is. Furthermore, an interesting, uh, uh, one of the interesting rules was stupidity does not, has no link to education. In other words, you could have a PhD from Harvard and you're just as likely to be stupid as a bricklayer uh, from Elverson, Pennsylvania. So uh, it, there's no link to any kind of education as far as whether you're stupid or not. So I would argue these owners, you know, they're stupid. They're, they're acting stupidly here and nothing more dangerous than stupid people. But I'd like to watch that video again. I'll probably uh, I'll talk about that again. It's very interesting. Um, you know, you think about a lot of what's going on in this country, and, you know, it's hard to 
you know, lay down where's the line between what's going on right now between evil and stupidity, you know. Uh, stupidity often follows evil. In other words, you got an evil guy leading the show, and then you just got a lot of stupid people lining up behind him. You know, he's making out like a bandit, but uh, the stupid people are enabling him. They're not getting anything. They're getting screwed over, but they're too stupid to know that. So uh, I wanted to do, dig into that more later. But yeah, it, it looks real bad here for baseball. Uh, it sucks. You know, here in the barn, we had taught ourselves to win at baseball. We had a solid season, 26 units to the good last year. Uh, and then it, it, with a uh, couple in our efforts uh, with Pittsburgh Louie, we were looking at a real big year next year. I thought, man, we could, we could really do some work here next season, uh, make some dough. But it's looking like that's all just a pipe dream. So um, right now, uh, dwindling options to make money in this country. Uh, the country's not in good shape at the moment. Not at all. Not at all. But hey, let's uh, let's talk some cheery news. We got football to watch on Saturday and tonight, really. So um, we got that. We got that. Let's get to the picks. Well, I guess uh, both these games are tonight, I guess. We get the Conference USA title, uh, which... Uh, we, we've got a, I know we got a handful of Conference USA fans as subscribers. These are people from Marshall, you know, the herd, the Marshall. We are Marshall. And, uh, well, I guess they had, you know, a moment there where they thought they were going to the Conference USA championship. And then I guess Western Kentucky dropped like third, uh, five straight touchdowns on them, and that was that. Um, and that's why we're taking Western Kentucky. I think these... These are two teams moving in different directions right now that um, I'm going to credit Brandon Walker. I heard him say this first, uh, so he said it. I think it's true that teams sometimes get better during the season. Sometimes teams get worse, and I think this uh, Utah team, San Antonio, is getting worse. They're just uh, whatever peak they were riding earlier in the year, you know, they're just starting to come off it a little bit. They might just be tired. Uh, uh, they played a lot of close games. They beat a lot of quality opponents. Uh, Memphis, uh, Illinois, I'm forgetting somebody. The last, uh, they beat Western Kentucky in a shootout at Bowling Green earlier this year, but that game was close. Now, since then, Western Kentucky hasn't lost, and a lot of those games have been blowouts. Uh, so Western Kentucky, I think we're at the moment sitting on all cylinders, and I think they're just going to make the adjustments that they didn't have the first time around where they lost. They're going to roll into San Antonio and take care of business. Utz's uh, last two opponents, they didn't play that well. I think Utz is starting to you know, just come off their peak, and uh, uh, maybe they're just tired. So we'll take Western Kentucky there. And then uh, also tonight, we got the Pac-12 championship. And I'll say this. I think it's possible you could see some real odd stuff happen as far as who's in the playoff. I, I don't think it's going to go chalk tomorrow or tonight. Uh, and uh, I think you'll see some upsets. Uh, I think you could see a two-loss team in the playoff for the first, I think, for the first time ever. Uh, so that's possible. You know, think about it. You got, if Georgia, well, I'm just thinking out loud here. If chalk holds, that means you basically got a, a f the number four slots open because Alabama will have two losses. They'll be out most likely. And then who gets in there? Uh, it'll probably either be Oklahoma State or Notre Dame. But if uh, Alabama wins or well, if Alabama, that's, that's, that's not a recipe for chaos because then you just got the two SEC teams in there. If Michigan loses, if Cincinnati loses, then, then you got crazy stuff going on. So, and I think some of that could happen. So, uh, what are we talking about? I think Oregon still has a chance to get in. I think they still have a chance to get in. If they win, and we're going to say they are going to win, 
that they are going to do what they got to do to get this done. I think they'll make the adjustments. They did not play well up at Utah, but then a lot of teams don't play well at Utah. And I think Utah might just be a little fat, dumb, and happy thinking they're so much better than Oregon. Oregon's a solid, solid team. So we're going to say Oregon wins. I still say they've got the best out-of-conference win of anybody this year, winning at Ohio State. So that's a real resume builder there. Um, won the Pac-12, winner of the conference. I think, uh, you know, they, they have an argument. There's an argument there. They're going to need some crazy stuff to happen, you know, but uh, it's possible. It's still possible, I would argue. Anyway, we're taking Oregon. Uh, we like this game pretty well, Baylor. We like Baylor to knock off Mike Gundy. Mike Gundy's always gotten close, always a bridesmaid, never a bride. I'm not going to say that's changed, and we're saying that stays the same. Baylor's going to, you know, this is probably his big chance to get in the playoff or his best chance that he's ever had. And we're going to say he's not going to get it done. Baylor's a solid team. There's just not that much difference between Oklahoma State and Baylor. Five and a half points, and the game, I guess you could argue, is going to be 50-50 fans for Baylor. Uh, the game's in Dallas. That's a hell of a lot closer. Waco is a hell of a lot closer to Dallas than Stillwater is. So um, we're going to say Baylor uh, is going to get it done and cover that number. Uh, the uh, Sun Belt Championship. Well, Billy Napier, as we've been telling you for a long time, was going to move up and up. You know, that, that hot name in the coaching ranks. Your, your next Urban Meyer, if you will, or not. But all that matters is uh, he's gone. So, you know, I didn't think uh, Lafayette was all that good all year. They really just, they've had better teams there under Napier. Uh, Appy State seems... They got hammered earlier in the year by Lafayette. But since then, I think Appy State, looking at the numbers, it looks like they've rediscovered their running game, which is what they do well, run the ball. And uh, earlier in the year, especially in that Lafayette game earlier in the year where they got destroyed, they just didn't run the ball. It was like, what, what are you guys doing? I had Lafayette in that game, so I was okay with it. So, yeah, throw the ball. Go ahead, keep throwing it. Well, you know, if they run the ball, they're going to win. And I think they are going to try to do that. So we're going to take uh, Appy State. Well, this is a big game. I mean, everybody's rooting against Cincinnati, I guess, that wants to get their team in. You know, Notre Dame is going to be pulling real hard for Houston. And so is uh, the Big 12 uh, people to get their people in and uh, what have you. I, I, I'd like to see Cincinnati get in. I want to see, you know, I'm... I'm you know, it's one of those things where you want to see it, but you don't want to see it. In other words, so Cincinnati will go up against, I don't know, let's just say a Michigan. And you're thinking, okay, come on, Cincinnati. And Michigan will probably beat them 42 to nothing. And you'll be like, so much for that, Cinderella. Uh, but you want them to give the, get that opportunity. I mean, you can't have these historic sport-altering upsets unless you have the opportunity to have it. So you got to get there before you can have the big upset. So we want Cincinnati to get there. I think they will get there. We're just playing against Houston here, basically strictly on a, uh, we don't think much of their coach and it's a weather game. And, uh, you know, it's going to be cold and crummy and it's just not Houston type weather. Uh, Cincinnati also, should, let's say, I don't know, we're in the third quarter and they're up a touchdown, there's not going to be a lot of thought on the Cincinnati sideline of, hey, we need to take the air out of the ball and just preserve our W here. You know, I think they're going to run their stuff and make sure they keep their foot on as much as, as possible, keep their foot on the gas because you get a narrow win. Now, all of a sudden, they get in that committee room and people are starting to find reasons to get rid of Cincinnati. So, you know, more is better for Cincinnati. Okay, the big SEC title game. What? Why do they play this game at 4 o'clock? Should this not be the last game of the night? Because it means more. Why do they play this one at 4 o'clock? I don't understand. But, I, 
you know, Saban as an underdog, he's got a hellacious record as an underdog. And Georgia's been lights out all year long, which I almost am just saying to myself, everybody's thrown the clunker this year at some point. Ohio State just threw theirs. Um, Michigan threw their clunker against Michigan State. Penn State, they dumped one to Illinois in an inexplicable bad game. Georgia hasn't had their clunker yet. Alabama, they clunked, uh, threw one away at uh, Texas A&M. So, you know, I think Georgia's due to have just an off game. And here's the bottom line in this game. When you're in the third and fourth quarter and the other team's just pounding on you, desperate, because they got to win to get in Alabama, and they're desperately really giving it to you, hitting like uh, as hard as they possibly can. In the back of the mind of those Bulldogs is going to be the thought that says, hey, we're already in. We're already in. And there's nothing Kirby Smart can say to those guys to put an invisibility shield on that thought. That's the truth, and they know it. They are in regardless, and I think that that could be a factor, that, that Alabama needs this game, Georgia doesn't. Yeah, Georgia's probably better, but they just don't need this game. So I'm kind of thinking Alabama's going to keep this one close. I, I'd be surprised if Georgia just goes out there and splatters Alabama, and, and then Nick Saban's left, you know, basically left where Ryan Day is, where he has to explain now to the media, the fans, the alumni, say, what the hell happened there? I mean, you're supposed to be an elite team, and uh, you just got your pants pulled down by one of your rivals. So what happened there? Nick Saban very rarely puts himself in that situation. So we're going to take Alabama. Uh, Pitt Wake Forest, we're going to go with Candy Pickett here over uh, – What's the fellow's name? Hartman? Hartman. Can't think of his first name. Uh, I think it's more and less of a Pickett versus Hartman deal as a defense. I think Pittsburgh actually plays a little defense and Wake Forest doesn't. Uh, I think that's more where we're at with this one. Uh, plus, I think Pittsburgh has been in the ACC title game in the last couple of years. So... Uh, Will it help them? I don't know. At least they know where the bathrooms are. So they, they should have some feel for it. We're going to take the uh, Panthers. All right, Iowa-Michigan. This is a big game here. Um, yeah, Michigan, after the way they destroyed Ohio State, the money is dumped pretty hard down on Michigan here. Uh, and they're 11-point favorites. I can't go there. I just can't go there for 11 points. I, I, I'll say this. There's no way Michigan's as good as they played last Saturday. That was their best game they've played probably in the last 10 years. And what they're going to do Saturday night is no way going to be as good as that. I'm pretty comfortable in saying that. Uh, they just wanted that game. They've wanted that game for 10, 20 years. So finally, they you know put it all together, get it. There's got to be a letdown. I mean, you know, in other words, here we got poor old Iowa, and everybody knows they're not all that good. And then we're going to play in the playoffs, where we might get a Georgia, we might get Alabama, we might get um, yeah, duh, who else is in there? Uh, so we we could uh, we could have a premium team here playing next week against. Uh, you know, us, in the playoff. So this is a real sandwich game. I just don't see how Michigan gets up for Iowa. These games tend to be closer than normal, you know, you normally would think. Uh, you know, I know Ohio State won some game out there, 69 to nothing or something like that against Wisconsin. But, uh, and, you know, 11 points, that's a lot. That's a lot. Two teams that are just going to slam the ball into the line of scrimmage and run it every down, that's a lot. I think Iowa's going to hold up at the line of scrimmage a hell of a lot better than Ohio State did. So we're taking the Hawkeyes. And then lastly, a game that I probably 
If you watch this last game, then you are a daisy. I would wager most people probably had enough football at this juncture and not watch this. But San Diego State, uh, six-point favorite against Utah State. We're taking the Aztecs, and I don't really have a rationale why. So, nine games. There you have it. Uh, we're morphing in. We, we practiced a little bit this weekend, unbeknownst to you. In college basketball, I was... You know, the good news is we did okay. You know, uh, I think our, you know, little system may be shaping up pretty well. We were trying to incorporate our money angle into college basketball. I think it's somewhat positive results. So probably next week. Now, I don't know what we're going to do yet. Because um, I'm coming up with dozens of games every, you know, I could get a, you know, 15 games a night. I don't have time to type all that up and do a video, which, you know, that's a two, three hour process every day. So I've been toying with the idea, of just like figuring out how to use Twitter. And then I could just type up a names, 15 names, bloop, throw it on Twitter. And there it is. Um, what do they give you? 144 characters, something like that. And, uh, so just do that rather than make a video where I'm just reading names off, uh, you know, 15, 20 names a night. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of picks. And I don't have a rationale where I can't totally explain it. Some of this is just, uh, you know, statistical stuff where, well, the statistics say play Team X. So we're playing Team X. And I couldn't name one player on Team X. So that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so it might be Twitter. That might be in whereas you get maybe two, maybe two basketball shows a week. Uh, otherwise, all the picks would be on Twitter. Possibly that's a that's a possibility. I don't, I'm not sure yet. At any rate, hey, hit the like button. I think these videos now you can still hit the dislike button if you want. I wish you didn't, but you, and I can see the ratio, but you can't. I've been playing. You know, I do watch other videos on YouTube and I see the dislike button still there, but it doesn't tell you how many there are. And I still say that's because people have been hammering the dislike button on every last video put out by the government and the state. So they want you, they don't want everyone to see that and go, wow, uh, Joe Biden really is unpopular. No, everyone loves Joe Biden. He had 87 million people vote for him. We love Joe Biden, don't we? Let's go Brandon. Anyway, Hit the like button and, hey, subscribe for God's sakes. I would like that. Get more subscribers. All right, signing off.